And we thank you, Lord. You'll use a little child to lead us sometimes. In fact, Jesus said something like, if we don't become like a little child, we cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Lord, help us, O Lord, Holy Spirit, to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And I thank you, Lord. That's what we intend to do, and that's what we're doing this morning. We're not going to leave this church criticizing, but we're going to praise God for what we did learn. And I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, before I start teaching, let me give you a, a simple instructions. Every teacher or minister has a little bone. How many knows what bones are? You know, how many has ever eaten a steak with a bone? How many has eaten the bone? <laughs> no, no. See, see, you throw the bone away or give it to your dog or you throw the bone away, but you eat the meat. Now, in my message, I have a lot of meat and it might be a couple of bones. Don't choke on them. Just take the bone and throw it away. How many understand what I'm talking about? Amen. How many understand what I'm talking about? Amen. That's simple. That's not complicated. I've seen some people just want to talk about the bone. Did you, did you see that bone? I mean, that was a big bone. But what about the meat around the bone? Eat the meat, throw the bone away. That's simple. That's not complicated. And I try to teach people that. And I declare sometimes they just as critical as they could be. Of course, you guys are not like that. So throw the bone away. And eat the meat. All right. Now that we got that straight. Now let me give you some bone. <laughs> I mean some meat. Okay. Give me some meat. Let's pray. Father, we ask for the meat of the Holy Ghost. And we thank you, Lord, that we want to learn something. And put it into practice. And we thank you, Lord, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We thank you, Lord, that we are your workmanship. We thank you, Father, that you've called us to be born again, that our inner man is brand new. We thank you, Father, for the mind of Christ. We thank you for your word that's forever settled in heaven. And we thank you for what you're teaching us today, and that we'll walk it out in our everyday life by the power of the Holy Spirit. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First scripture on the board <coughs> was found in <coughs> 2 Timothy chapter 15. I'm sorry. 2 Timothy, chapter, uh, verse 15. Chapter 2, verse 15, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, we'll get it straight directly. Chapter 2, verse 15. Here we go. Now, <clears throat> we have God's part and we have our part. Don't look at your pamphlets yet. We're not there yet. This is our part. Study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourselves to God approved. Notice, tested by trials or trial. A workman who has no cause to be ashamed. Hmm. Correctly analyzing and adequately dividing. Everybody say dividing. dividing. Okay. Rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. As I deal with people over the years, and I've had to learn this many times over and over again, sometimes people have a truth, but they have it in the wrong dispensation. If you read your Bible, you'll, you'll find that there's seven dispensations. Some of the things that God has man to write down in each dispensation, some of the things stop there in that dispensation. Others come over to the next dispensation or the next and the next right on through to the end. But many of the things and the truths that are in uh, these uh, seven dispensations, some of the truths stop, but some of the truths are carried on to the next. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Raise your hand. We got How many Bible students have we got in here? Everybody raise your hand. Okay, good. Right, you need to remember it. Now, the first, just to roughly go over to, to refresh your mind, God deals with man in these different dispensations in different ways. He gives commands. He tells them what to do, not to do. Uh, he deals with them. And then next dispensation, next dispensation, right on. So from eternity to eternity, 
He's given us these dispensations, which is a period of time that God deals with mankind and gives them certain instructions and does certain things for them. Now, the first dispensation is as we call innocence. We know Adam and Eve was created by God. They were in the garden. One command God gave them. Do not eat from that tree of knowledge of good and evil. And all the other trees and everything else, the tree of life, everything else is yours. He gave them responsibilities in that dispensation to take authority, uh, to uh, take care of the garden. They had responsibilities to do. But one thing, don't you touch that tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now you see, in them doing that, basically here's what they were saying. Hmm. Knowledge of good and evil? Why, if we have that knowledge, we, we don't need God. We'll have all this knowledge of what is good and evil. We can choose for ourselves. How many of you know it's not within man to know how to walk? One person knows it. He's a good teacher back there. I said it's not within man to know how to walk. Amen. How many of you understand that? See, if you think you know how to go through this old world without God, and you leave God out of the equator, if our government continues to lead, leave God out of the equator of government, how many know we in deep trouble? Amen. And that's why we in some of that deep trouble today. You cannot leave God out of your life. If you do, you're going to get into big trouble. And what you're really saying is, well, you know, I know right from wrong, you know. Yeah, but you don't have the power within you to do what is right. And without the Holy Spirit in you, you'll walk as crooked as you can. And I will too. But he is so gracious over a period of time to give man the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit's been given to us to direct us, guide us, lead us, empower us. And even show us things to come. And so I want to encourage this people, you, me, all of us, to really connect up with the Holy Spirit of God and let him guide us through by his word and by his uh, wisdom that he imparts into us. All right, with that in mind now, we know that Adam and Eve messed up, didn't they? And we know it's all the woman's fault. <laughs> I, I, we got to get a back door here. <laughs> a, a quick fire escape for the preacher. <laughs> well, no, Eve was deceived. But Adam willfully chose his wife over God and we've been in trouble ever since but God is so wonderful Amen. to change some things and fixed it where we can have salvation and be saved and have his spirit living in us directing us and guiding us and giving us the wisdom to know how to walk day by day Amen. all right now that, uh, we know that after they sinned, God had to remove them from the garden. Now, and they went into what we call the, the dispensation of conscience. And so, man has a conscience. We know right from wrong to some degree by our conscience. But see, the conscience can get defiled. The conscience can become hardened. The conscience can become cold, inoperative. That's why it's so important to keep yourself washed up by the blood of Jesus where our conscience will be sensitive to hear the Holy Spirit and to feel him move. You know yourself, you can think of situations that uh, people wanted you to do, but your conscience wouldn't let you. It, it, your conscience just spoke up loud. How many of you remembers some of your conscience hollering loud inside of you? Let me see your hands. How many know you got a conscience? How many don't know you got a conscience? How many here knows you got two foot, two feet? 
How many of you know you got one head? That's your husband. <laughs> Where's that back door at? <laughs> no, how I many know Jesus is the head, the husband, the, the wife, and then on down, okay? I didn't hear one amen on that. I, I didn't, I, now, men don't get no big head because God will be on your case if you don't treat your wife right. In fact, your prayers will not quick at be, get answered at all. I wonder why my, answer, my, my prayers are not being answered. How are you treating your wife? Uh, duh. Duh. You better quit that dun and you start treating her right. It's quiet in here. How many loves me? Uh, I'll see if I can take care of that before this message is over. <laughs> All right, let me move quick. I'm teaching. The time is going by fast. Help me, Lord. All right, next, is, next one is the third one. Now, we know that uh, between the conscience uh, and we know that the flood came and then, the, then you had your government and they built this big tower and all of this and everything. And this is all on your little handout that I give you so you can read it when you get home and, and get a better understanding of it. And then from the uh, civil government, uh, we know that uh, after the flood and all the government and then then the promise that was Abraham. How many remembers Abraham? Father Abraham. How many of you know that we are the children of Abraham through Christ Jesus our Lord? Galatians tells us that. Okay, so after the promise, then he sends the law. Moses comes on the scene. God raises up a people, the, the nation of Israel, to, to, to come to a point that when Christ came to die on the cross, that they would preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Okay? And then we see that uh, when Christ did come, and, and, the, and the Jews did not overall, some of them did, very few of them did, but some of them did. The nation as a whole did not, and they just wouldn't, ref they just wanted to keep on with their religious system. And of course, 70 AD, God had to destroy the temple and spread them all over the world. But then he prophesied in the word of God that he would bring them back. And we see them back in the land today. Now, some of the big problems you see today uh, <clears throat> in uh, people taking uh, the, the different, uh, for example, the law in the Old Testament and trying to bring it over into what we call the day where we're in is the time of grace. This is the time of grace. The time of the church. God raised up the church. And so we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now Paul had a big hard time when you read Galatians, how they, the Jewish Judaizers came in and was messing with the uh, Christian people and everything. He says, yeah, you got to believe in Jesus, but, there's that but again, but you got to be circumcised and you got to keep the law of Moses. And Paul spends a lot of time. See, they're bringing that, that law and the circumcision and the certain principles in the Old Testament over into the period of grace. And this is where people get all mixed up. Is the law good? Yes. Did, God, did Jesus fulfill the law? Yes. Uh, do we have to keep the law to be saved? No, not to be saved. But see, now we have the lawgiver who lives in us, and the lawgiver enables us to keep the law. But if we don't keep it, how many of you know that God's made provisions? And that's what we find in 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness, and we just keep on going. Now, the law is good, but how many of you know the law giver is better? And when we have the law giver living in us, he's the one that directs us and guides us and teaches us what is right and what is wrong. Now, it's very important you understand what I just said. Hmm? Very important. And so when you go and you start studying the scriptures, uh, you see that they were trying to bring some of the, the rituals and the, the law and the Jewish customs over into this period of the church age. <clears throat> you see, the church age was a mystery. Now, we've been talking about the mystery uh, the last uh, three or four Sunday evenings. I'm not Sunday evening, but uh, Wednesday evenings. Uh, Paul got, uh, 
eight, what do you call, secrets or mysteries. Jesus taught about the mystery of the kingdom. See, that's where people get mixed up. See, Jesus came and taught the, the mystery and explained the kingdom. See, in, 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 in the Old Testament time, they had no idea about the mystery of the church. See, you must understand that. Okay, they never had the mystery about the bride of Christ. They never had the mystery of Christ living in us, which is our only hope of glory. See, they didn't have that knowledge. And so Paul comes along, who is the apostle to the Gentiles, and God gave him special revelation. You see all this in the Bible. I wish I had hours to just, just go from verse and everything, but I just got to bring it down. If you've been studying your Bible, maybe you'll go back and study it again. But anyway, Paul receives this revelation from God. And that's why you'll read in there, he says, my gospel. I used to read that. Paul's gospel, what's he talking about? Well, Paul's gospel, he got especially, especially from the risen Lord. How many of you know that Jesus ain't dead? Yeah. yeah, he died, he was buried, but he was resurrected. And he's in a glorified body. And he's in heaven right now. And he's directing his church, his people, through his spirit, the Holy Spirit, to keep us walking on the straight path. Okay, so Jesus himself in his resurrected body is seated at the right hand side of the Father, but his spirit, the Holy Spirit, has been given. He's, in fact, he said, uh, boys, he's talking to his disciples, I, 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 listen, I got to go. If I don't go, the comforter won't come. So we know Jesus went and the comforter came on the day of Pentecost. How many remember the day of Pentecost? Okay, so when you read the scriptures, you've got to realize that some of the principles come over into different dispensation, and they're good principles to live by. Certain principles are stopped at that particular dispensation, okay? Now, we know we're in the period of grace. Now, I want to show you something in the Scripture, and I want you to turn to Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. Remember, I'm teaching. Isaiah 6, I'm sorry, 9, 6, and 7. Remember, we're studying. Now, look at this scripture. Everybody look at the board. It's on the board. Now, let's break it down. For to us, a child is born. Now, ask yourself a question. Has the child been born yet? Yes. And who was this child? Jesus. All right. Boy, y'all are smart. Must have been listening to good teachers. Born to us. All right, to us, a son is given. Who gave the son? God the Father. For God so loved the world that he gave, there you see it right there, John 3, 16, gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. How many see that? Okay. Now, ask yourself a question. Is that past tense or future tense? Everybody knows that's past tense. And that happened uh, when the child was given, was born, was, we counted in our calendar time. Uh, we have 365 days in ours, but the uh, Jews was 360. All right, so the son was born and he was given by God the Father. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. <clears throat> well, I want to ask you a question. Is the government upon his shoulders yet? No. When will that government be on his shoulders? Well, there you go. That's why you're here to learn. During the millennium years, that's when he comes back the second time, lands on Mount Olive, it splits, and he takes over the earth, and his government begins. And we'll all be as his bride in our resurrected body to reign and rule with him for that 1,000 years of millennium years. Now, during that time, the curse will be lifted. How many of you know the curse has not been lifted yet? That's why animals eat animals. That's why people eat, well, killed people. While we, all this bad stuff, the curse is still on the earth. This body here has been cursed. It's not redeemed yet. 
It's subject to sickness. It's subject to but anything. How many of you know that so many people are catching the flu today and they're dying, especially the young kids? How many know what I'm talking about? You, you, see, that's important. Because these bodies have not been redeemed yet. But when Christ comes back, lands on Mount Olive, he becomes, and the government becomes uh, upon his shoulders, he's begin. he's the number one. Now, he's not... Uh, uh, he's not going to be a president. Nobody's going to uh, vote him in. If I can I say it very simple, he's going to be a dictator. Uh, yeah, he's going to say, this is the way to go, and you're, yes, sir, you go. But he's going to be a good dictator. He's going to be our king. His word will be absolute. Won't be none of this beckering in Washington, D.C., like you see up there now, beckering back and forth. He'll just speak, and we'll jump and do it. Now, some folks don't like that, but I like that because, you see, I walk with him every day. And I know his nature. And he's a just God. I love him so much, don't you? See, what he tells you to do is for our good. And so we know that his government, but you see now, I want you to see a, a, a child is born and a son has been given. How much time between the first part of that verse and the government upon, that will be upon his shoulder? How many years do we have there? Somebody give me a quick answer. That's good in arithmetic. Hmm? All right, Albert. 2,000 years. When he was born... Until the second coming of Christ, period of grace, the church age, tribulation, and then Christ will land, and you've got 2,000 years just right there. Anybody learn anything yet? See, that's revelation knowledge. So you've got to rightly divide the word of truth. And this is where so many people will bring old truths that were meant just for that particular dispensation over into the, uh, the disposition of grace and mercy. All right, now, let's read on a little bit. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. Wow. Now, look at that, all his names. He's wonderful. He's our counselor. He's our God. He's our everlasting father. Right now, he is. Is God, his everlasting father of, eter of eternity, the prince of peace. He's all of those things, and he lives right now in us. And one day, even though he's at the right-hand side of the father, he's coming back. I'm not talking about the rapture here now. The rapture removes the church where the seven years tribulation can come in. And if you read the scriptures and know what I'm preaching here this morning, you'll understand that when he comes, he's going to come to judge the world. In fact, turn over, if you will, to Jude. That's in the New Testament, Jude. Matthew, Mark, and Jude. Jude 1, 14 and 15. Are you there? All right, look at 14. Everybody look at the board. It's up on the board. Amplified. Now, Enoch, Jude is talking about Enoch here. He's saying Enoch prophesied about these people. Now, you've got to identify who these people are. These people are the wicked people of the earth that refuse to accept God's grace. We had a phone call not too long ago, and the question was, if God is such a loving God, why does he send people to hell? Well, he doesn't. No, he doesn't send nobody to hell. They send themselves to hell because they will not accept God's love and forgiveness and salvation that God has provided for them where they won't go to hell. Now, you've got to calculate that in your brain. God, it is God's will that no man perish. I will say that again. It's God's will that no man perish. But we all have a will. Let me pick on somebody. 
Who can I pick on? Oh, somebody said, oh, Lord, save me. <laughs> well, I don't want you to fall to the floor. All right, here's a young lady that, right here. See this young lady right here? Yeah. Nice little young lady. Now, she's got a will. All right. Now, she's in love with this handsome man right here. He's real. I mean, he's got it. He's like me. He's got it. <laughs> Even though some of mine has left. All right. Uh, and she loves him. But if she's a roebuck, she'll have to do what God says. That, no, you can't marry him. You marry that ugly guy. Let's find somebody. Uh, we well, you know ugly people in here. <laughs> See, him being a loving God, he won't force her to marry somebody she don't want to marry. Let me understand what I just said. Now, y'all are not married yet, are you? Are you looking forward to it? <laughs> I better stay. I don't want to get <laughs> I'll spare you. <laughs> but you don't want to ma marry somebody your mother says, you're going to marry him or else. And what would you say? Read my lips. <laughs> no, you wouldn't want to do that. See, you have a free will. See, we don't appreciate our free will. Everybody say, God, God. I've never done it before. But thank you, Lord, for my free will. Now, God gives us a will either to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil or the tree of life. Now, we have chosen, I hope everybody here has chosen, Jesus. God didn't make you. He presented Jesus. He convicted you. He showed you. But by your free will, I choose. And you go in the Old Testament, it says, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Who said that? You're right. Joshua said that. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. So man has a will, and God has put before man heaven and hell. Well, I'm not going to let Jesus be my Lord. You don't have to. God still loves you. While you're still a sinner, he loves you. But he will not trust you, trespass your will. So God sends nobody. When you choose to do it the devil's way, when you choose to do it your own way, you're choosing hell yourself. You're the reason or the person that will not accept God's grace and mercy. Look what God did. He sent his only begotten son to die on a cross where we could have eternal life and forgiveness of sins. What more can he do? He made a way. Now it's up to man who has a will, who was created in the likeness of God. The psalmist says, what is man that God is mindful of him? He loves you so much he will not dictate to you to choose. You must make your own mind up. I choose to serve the living God. And when you choose his way, then you get all the benefits you become his child. He becomes your daddy. And daddy will always take care of his kids. So don't blame God for anybody going to hell. But you see, they love darkness rather than light. The Bible says that. So you go after what you love. And so many people love darkness. And they do their deeds in darkness thinking that even God won't see it, but he sees everything, but he still loves them while they're yet in their sins. And he made a way to send his son and allowed his son to die on Calvary. That every individual can be saved and go to heaven. And if they don't receive his grace and mercy, he will not trespass their will. That's just the way it is. That's the way he designed it. I love him for it, and I thank God. When I was 26, I made my decision, and we've been walking together all these years. And I'm going to tell you something. He's a good God, and he loves you so very much. Amen. All right, so you see in that one scripture, well, let's finish that. 
It was of these people, moreover, that Enoch, in the seventh generation, Enoch was from, from Adam, prophesied when he said, Behold, now notice, catch this, the Lord comes with his madrids, I think that's the way you pronounce it, of holy ones. Now, who are they? You've got to identify who they are. Well, it says ten thousands of his saints. These holy ones are ten thousands. Uh, by the way, that's you and me. Everybody say, I ain't a sinner. I'm a saint. Yeah. See, when you accept Christ, you become a saint. When you read the Bible, he writes the, uh, the epistles to the saints, not to the sinners. Now, he mentions them in the scriptures, of course. Now, look what it says there. Now, Jesus, that word, they got to identify that. And I'm going to help you. Now, I think all, you already know it, but that's the second coming of Christ. Is everybody agree to that? Yeah. Second coming of Christ. And who's he coming with? Yeah. All right. Now, if he's coming with these ten thousands of his saints somewhere back there, they had to go up to come back with him. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. If that don't make sense, help me out. Very clear. It's not complicated. Now, we find out, and we have other scriptures showing that when he came, of course, we call it the rapture, which is not a, uh, a, a biblical word, but it's an English word that we use uh, to describe the snatching out, the twinkling of an eye will be changed. Just like that. Woo! I like that fast work, don't you? All right. Now. So they're coming back. Now, where is he going to land? Now, we know the Bible. Where is he going to land? Mount, Mount Olive. And it's going to split. Now, what is he coming for? Well, next verse, 15. We're talking about rightly dividing the word of truth. And don't and make sure that we see each truth in di, di, each uh, dispensation. Now, we know when he's coming back, it'll be the dispensation of the tribulation years. Okay, at the end of the tribulation years. Uh, one third of the Jews will go into the wilderness and God's going to take care of them. If we had time, we could go, go that way. But one third, you'll see that in the scriptures. Zechariah talks about it and so does uh, Revelation, they'll go into the wilderness uh, and, uh, and they'll be uh, kept there safely. God will see that, even though the Antichrist will send his army against them like a, uh, to just drown them like a river, um, God will take care of them. Now you've got to put your mind back to when uh, God took care of the Israelites uh, when they was coming out of Egypt. How many of you know God took care of them? Hmm? How many know the enemy was coming against them and was going to wipe them out? And something happened. That little creek, they jumped across it. No? No, this, yeah, the Red Sea opened up and they went through it to the other side. And the very thing that God used to save them destroyed the enemy. All right. Oh, I tell you, God is smart. All right, now. So we asked the question, well, why is he coming? Now, there's many reasons. It's all through the scriptures and all. But one thing is to execute judgment. Everybody say execute judgment upon the church. Where was that taken care of? Calvary. Rightly dividing the word of two. Upon all and to convict all the impious unholy ones of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the severe, abusive, jarring things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, Christ himself. Now, God, don't, it, it, the Bible says, it, in Ezekiel says, it takes, God takes no pleasure and punishing the wicked. Now, let's bring this down and then we're going to close. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> if you got a hundred cows and you got one cow with a disease 
And you know if you leave that one cow in with those 99, that that disease will be transmitted to each one of them, and you'll lose every one of them. What would be your wisdom on that? Huh? Yeah, find the one cow with the disease, get rid of him, and save the 99. That's wisdom. Was it your good pleasure to do that to the cow that had the disease? No, but wisdom told you if I don't, all the other 99 is going to be destroyed. This is God's world. I'm telling you the truth. If the Lord don't come soon, man will destroy this world. But God ain't going to. We know God is not going. But I'm saying, I'm saying that if he doesn't come, this world will explode. North Korea take care of that. Now they can send missiles right over here to Charleston. I bought me an umbrella the other day. They're coming. Umbrella. No. Everybody say, I'm raptured ready. I'm atomic bomb ready. Thank you, Jesus. You took care of it all. Ain't nothing to worry about. It's in God's hands. But you know yourself. I want you to think for a moment. And we don't have much time. I know it's a hard thing sometimes to think. <laughs> it, it might stretch a few folk in here. Sometimes it stretches me. Sometimes who says think? I'm, I'm trying to think. What's my, what's, what's my name? How many ever forget their telephone number? <laughs> Sometimes I punch, I go to get my gas and, and, and I got to put my number in there. And it's to, to see. No, that ain't it. And I do it and it messes the whole thing up. And, and I pull my wallet out. I try to find my little number. You know, you got to punch your number in there. What do you call that number? Huh? Co uh, what? Just your code. Code. You know what I'm talking about? The little, how many of you ever forget their number? How many forgets who you are? <laughs> Come up here. We'll pray for you right now. <clears throat> All right, let's get back. Let's get serious now. <clears throat> so when you stop and think, when he comes to, to catch up the saints. Now listen, the, res uh, the, the resurrection was no mystery. The catching up of the living saints was the mystery that was kept from the people of the past. Some of the other apostles didn't even know that. Now, this is all in the scriptures, and I wish I had time to, you know, get down to each. But we don't have that time. But see, this was Paul received from the Lord himself, the risen Lord, these secrets or these mysteries, the Bible calls them, mysteries. Nine of them. Jesus had one, which he, he, talked, he came and talked about the kingdom. See, the, see, when you, how many of you know in Acts chapter 1, verse 6, what did the disciples ask Jesus? Are you going to restore the kingdom now? They still was kingdom-minded. See, that's future uh, 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 disposition, son. No. See, they weren't aware of this particular time of the church age that we're in now. They weren't aware of that. They didn't understand that. They just kingdom. But see, that was promised to them all the way back to, to Abraham. Abraham would be the, the, the father of many nations. There would be a kingdom that would come. And the Jewish people, not during the tribulation year, not tribulation, but during the millennium years, Israel will be the number one, well, the number one country, the number one the capital of the world. Did you know Israel, right there where it is, it's the center of the earth? Now you know, I just told you. That's the center of the earth. Jesus went up there, and he's coming back. Did I again? Center, right there on Mount Olive. So, see, when you study to show yourself approved unto God, at work that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, put each one of these truths into proper dispensations. How many of you understand what I'm talking about now here? And uh, I don't have time to go through the whole thing. Now, the question is, we know that the church will reign and rule with him. 
those many years. And then there's going to be, I love this last, this last uh, dispensation will be a thousand years. And did you know the lion will lay down with the sheep? Can you imagine, how many have ever seen a lion and a little sheep coming up? And that lion will not bother that little sheep during that dispensation. Because the curse will be lifted. Susan asked me, well, honey, will women, uh, will they have pain when they have children during that period of time? No. That came about because of the curse. How many know that? Go way back. Say way back. So y'all could have a lot of kids. <laughs> no pain. No pain at all. No, you won't because you'll be in your glorified body. But there'll be people. One third of the Jews will go over into the millennium. And the, and the 144,000, that's another group that's different than that one third. Of course, Matthew, you read Matthew, you'll see all of that. But God is good. We have a great future ahead of us. But when you study the scriptures, and I hope you'll study the pamphlet that I give you, and I hope that'll help you a little bit about some things that maybe answer some questions in your life. Let's pray. Father, if there's anybody in here that's never made Jesus Christ Lord of their life, I'm not talking about joining the church, walking down the aisle, getting your name on the, written, uh, on the roster. No, I'm talking about being born again by the Spirit of God and the incorruptible seed of the Word of God that they make it him Lord of their lives. Father, I pray that if it is, that they'll come after I dismiss and talk to me about it, and I'll be glad to share the gospel with them. Father, we thank you now for the food that we're about to receive, and thank you, Lord, that we are studying the Word of God, rightly dividing the Word of truth. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.